But, uh, Paul Keating once said that when you change the government, you change the country. And on the eve of the first budget, those words have never been more relevant. Uh, the Abbott government has already, to use the Prime Minister's words, stamped its authority on nearly every aspect of Australian life, whether it be winding back action on climate change, on demonising refugees, on challenging the independence of the ABC, of dismantling laws that protect Australians from racial vilification. In, in a few short months, this government has changed the very fabric of Australian society. And in recent months, there's been a lot of talk about debt and deficits and about the ongoing budget emergency. And no claim has been too outrageous. Uh, we, uh, if you were to believe the rhetoric from the uh, Treasurer, are on track with a disaster to compare with the Great Depression or modern-day Greece. We are uh, a country that is on track to default with our debt. Uh, we are an international pariah with a third world economy. Last year, the Treasurer went as far as to say the cupboard's bed is bare, there is no money left in the till. He effectively declared the Australian nation bankrupt. Now, now I understand that in politics, perceptions everything. I get that. Um, and, and in this piece of theatre, the nation's uh, finances are effectively being used as a political bludgeon. While it might serve the government's purposes, it's a piece of political theatre that doesn't serve the country well. Federal budgets have an enormous impact on people's lives, whether you can go to the doctor, uh, whether your kids can afford a decent education, uh, what happens to someone if they become unemployed. Are people going to have enough for their retirement? They are all issues that are dealt with uh, in the nation's uh, budget. And um, it is uh, the government that believes it's necessary to outsource uh, that task to big business, that these are questions for the market, not for government, that lower taxes and lower spending are the only pathway to prosperity, and despite all of the evidence to the contrary, these are articles of faith for the coalition. Now, we have a very different view. It's a bit more nuanced. It doesn't fit into a three-word slogan, but it's a vision that says everybody regardless of the size of their wallet, regardless of whether they're born with a, disease, a genetic disease or not, they deserve access to decent health care. It's a vision that says every kid in this country should get a decent education. It's a vision that says we need to protect our natural environment and we need to get on with the challenge of tackling climate change. We understand that sometimes markets work well and are the best way to achieve these tasks. We also understand that there is often a role for government. Uh, far from being inherently evil, taxation is the price we pay for a civilised society. Taxes are health care, taxes are education, taxes are trains and roads. How much we tax matters much, much less than the quality of our tax spend. And the difficulty for the coalition is that when you get beyond these simple slogans and sound bites and you put these competing visions to the Australian community, what you get is that the, Australian, uh, the current government's agenda is deeply unpopular, and it's unpopular because it benefits those with wealth and privilege ahead of those ordinary people who rely on those services. And that's why they have had to tell this misleading story about the nation's economy. It's why they created the piece of political theatre that was the National Commission of Audit. They to get the answers what they wanted. They handpicked the actors, effectively a who's who of corporate Australia. They wrote the script, and the script sort of goes something like this. We've got a structural deficit. The only way we can fix it is by drastically cutting government expenditure. We've got huge debt. We've got to reduce it uh, urgently, and we've got to make deep, deep cuts. The best place to start, of course, is on those services that Australians rely on on health care, on education, on providing supports to people with disabilities. Now, the Greens established an inquiry into the Commission of Audit because we wouldn't buy it. We would not buy the lie. And we heard evidence through that commission from academics, from unions, uh, from economists, from business groups right around the country, and they told a very different story, that Australia's debt crisis is a fabrication. 
that Australia's level of public debt is amongst the lowest in the OECD, and that far from being uh, a crisis, we have an economy that is the envy of the world. Um, those people, those experts, they challenged the falsehood of Australia's high taxation levels. That far from being an economy that's shackled with high taxes, our tax take as a percentage of GDP is low by world standards and well below the OECD average. What we heard was this simple proposition. It's not how much you tax, it's what you do with those taxes that matter. And that brings us on to those public services that we deliver in the form of universal health care, in the form of education, in the form of supports for people who are down and out, in the form of supports for people who have disabilities. And we've learnt that we deliver those services very, very efficiently. When it comes to health care, we have one of the most efficient health care systems in the world. As a proportion of GDP, we spend about 9 per cent of our GDP on health care. Compare that to the US, which spends double what we spend and gets much worse health outcomes. And yet in this budget, on the back of the recommendations from the Commission of Audit, we have a prescription for a US-style health system. If ever there was a triumph of ideology over evidence, this is it. When you look at our public service, what we see is that following years of public sector cuts, there isn't any more low-hanging fruit. That cuts to the public service means cuts to services, pure and simple. That's not to say we don't have some long-term challenges. We do. Over the next 50 years, we do have some challenges that we need to start addressing. But the Senate inquiry into the Commission of Audit heard very, very clearly that if we do have a structural problem within the budget, the, 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 the problem is on the revenue side of the equation. That we've had inadequate investment in infrastructure, in training and education, which are the real long-term threats to a global competitiveness. That if we simply cut services, we're doing nothing about the underlying structural problems within the Australian economy. And just recently, the uh, Treasury, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury, Martin Parkes Parkinson, expressed a similar view that if we are going to meet our commitments to provide these critical services, we can't ignore the issue of government revenue. And what better place to start, if we are serious about the end of the age of entitlement, the end of corporate welfare, let's start by abolishing the huge handouts that go to sectors, rent-seeking industries um, in the economy. What about the fuel, the cheap fuel, that Gina Reinhart and the mining industry get in the form of the diesel fuel rebate? Rather than investing billions into uh, the private health insurance sector, why not invest that directly into uh, public health? Uh, let's have a big debate about the issue of tax concessions in this country, like the huge concessions that go to superannuation and other uh, sectors of the economy. It might not appear on the annual budget figures, but we do know that these enormous tax expenditures they cost us billions and they strip money away from the services that Australians want. That's what they do. And if we're serious about addressing these long-term challenges, we can't afford to ignore the huge handouts that go to big business and other areas of the economy that do nothing except for widen the huge gap in this country between the haves and the have-nots. In the end, this budget is about this simple proposition. What is the measure? of a decent, caring society? What is it that defines the Australia that we want to live in? Uh, in the view of the Greens, it's uh, straightforward. We want a quality health care system that everybody can afford, not just those people on high incomes. We want every child in this country to be able to access a decent education and to further their prospects uh, through universities. We don't want to see a huge gap between uh, the rich and the poor. And we want to see our natural environment protected. We don't subscribe to this dog-eat-dog -dog agenda of this government. We don't want a world where it's everyone for themselves, where if, where if you're lucky enough to be born into wealth and privilege, well, good luck to you. You deserve more of it, and if not, well, tough luck. And that's why we will be here fighting every minute of every day to make sure these changes in this budget 
that affect ordinary Australians don't see the light of day.